everyone and welcome to the channel as you guys know before i had done a tutorial regarding the uh, photo video time lapse panoramic astro astro dark functions it was honestly a very basic tutorial uh, kind of just scratching the surface a little bit not really explaining all the details so what we're going to do tonight is we're actually going to dive really into the astro function for the dwarf 2 so to get us started let's go ahead and connect And the first thing we're going to do is actually we're going to go ahead and switch it to Astro Mode. I'm going to hit Stop Code 2 here. And once we're in Astro Mode, what we're going to do is we're going to point our telescope straight up in the sky. As far up as it will go. You're going to really try to find a very bright star. Once you find a good star, what you're going to do is you're going to zoom in on that star. You're going to open the focus button. And this is very important. The, the auto uh, focus does not work very well for the uh, astro function in Dwarf 2 quite yet. So what I re recommend is that you press the plus and minus button until you see that your stars are pretty much at the pinpoint sharpness that you would want your, be your stars to be in your final image. So if I don't see a lot of trial and error, sometimes you'll have to start shooting, go back, start shooting again, go back again. But in the end, it's always going to be worth it. So once you have all of your stars nice and focused, you're going to go ahead and point your telescope to a part of the sky where there are no trees, no buildings, nothing in the way that can mess up your plate solving for this next step. This next step is pretty much the fundamental part of your whole entire dwarf lab routine. If you do not get this right, your tracking will be messed up and your photography won't even work. So... Uh, make sure that you point it to a part of the sky where there is nothing in the way. You're going to press the feature button and you're going to press the calibration button. Now, what the calibration does is it actually takes three different pictures of the sky. And using those three different pictures, it uh, basically creates a star map within the algorithm so that it knows exactly uh, where in the sky it is looking at. Also, the rotation of the dwarf too. Uh, it basically factors in a bunch of things in order for it to be able to track the objects in the sky correctly and go to the coordinates correctly. So, again, this is a very important part. If you don't get it right, sometimes it'll say plate solving failed, and perhaps it's because you have a tree building or cloud blocking the view, or perhaps you just have really bad focus. So, make sure that you get all those things correctly, and it should... Uh, pretty much plate solved correctly and it will say calibration success at the end. So for this, uh, for us to be able to start looking at the settings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the feature button and we're gonna try to find an object in tonight's sky that does not have anything blocking the view. So go ahead and start scrolling through here. We're gonna go ahead and try the Eagle Nebula, see if anything's blocking that. Okay, go to tracking is now complete and it is now tracking our object. So uh, we're going to go ahead and give this a little bit of trial and error. We're going to go ahead and play around with the settings a little bit and see what works best with uh, this nebula. So we're going to go ahead and press the settings button. We are going to go ahead and set this to 15. And we are going to leave everything else alone. Go ahead and close that. We're going to press the feature and we're just going to go ahead and set this to only a few exposures just so we can really show you guys uh, how how this works. We're going to go ahead and close the feature button. Uh, again, we're going to leave IR pass normal, leave everything the same. The three main things that have the biggest effect in regards to the actual data itself is the settings, the gain, and the IR pass and IR cut filter. Uh, if you don't get these things really worked out perfectly the way that you want them, oftentimes your image will either be overexposed, underexposed, have too much noise in it. So you really have to try this out, test it out. Uh, pay attention to what I'm going to say regarding the settings so that your image comes out as clean as possible. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try it at 15 seconds. Uh, we're going to leave uh, the gain at 80 and leave the IR cut uh, at IR pass. Of course, it does look like my image is a little bit blurry, but perhaps that is a result of tracking. 
Uh, so again, we're going to try this out at 15 seconds and let you guys see a little bit of the differences regarding the different settings that we're going to put in here. So we'll go ahead and press the shoot button. Okay, so for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and stop that at 10 exposures. And we're just going to show you guys uh, pretty much what that was able to bring out. As you can see, the focus of my stars was a little bit off. So what you can do is once it is done uh, shooting and stacking, you go ahead and go to your album. Allow it to load. And sometimes it won't really want to load for you, so you kind of just have to download it. Honestly, I feel like that works better. Go ahead and close that. Success. There you go. Here is what we get with 10 exposures at 15 seconds, 80 gain, IR pass. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit of all of this to you. Hold on. Go ahead and refocus it. Go ahead and plus and minus. Let's say you get a nice and sharp. Perhaps that's better. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go over this now. So what do the uh, exposure time do? This is what... Okay, so the exposure time, what this does is it allows more light to enter into the sensor in order for you to get less noise and have more uh, visibility with nebula, galaxy, stars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's a very important function. Honestly, one of the most important things that you can use regarding the settings is the exposure time. If you were to set it at one, honestly, you wouldn't really get much when it comes to nebula or galaxies. Of course, if you want to try it at one, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, the exposure time less than one, I would re more recommend that for things like the moon because it is such a bright object. Having less exposure time can uh, honestly show more detail in regards to having less uh, like it does with nebula and galaxy it's just because it's so bright you don't want to over brighten overexpose the sensor now you go ahead and you bump it up to say 10 10 is another good exposure time 15 is honestly pushing it because the dwarf 2 uh, doesn't have the strongest best sensor but it is still very good uh 10 seconds is good if you do not have your dwarf 2 polar aligned of course you're still going to get eventually field rotation but the amount of walking noise would be less. If you have your telescope polar aligned, I recommend you always set it at 15 seconds to allow the most amount of light possible to enter and to hit that sensor. It is very, very important in astrophotography that you have the most exposure time possible to really bring out the details and the beauty of the night sky. Now, what does gain do? Gain is a very important function as well. The less gain that you have, the less uh, photons and things are able to be received to the sensor in order for you to have more or less detail on nebula or galaxies. For nebula, I would honestly recommend you set it at 15 seconds, gain 100. 100 gain allows a whole lot more light to access the sensor uh, with less time. Of course, the amount of gain that you add if you have less exposure time and you put the gain up crazy high, what that's going to do is that's going to add a lot of noise. As you can see, this is noise here. It's going to add a lot of noise to your image. You do not want noise in your image because it can mess up your entire post-processing system and it can make your final image kind of come out not looking the best. So if you're going to set your gain past 90, I would recommend that you have your exposure time at least at 10 if not a 10, anything above that is fine if you're going to have it set above uh, 90. With this uh, telescope, I definitely recommend you don't go past 140 as that can really overexpose the sensor. Uh, for Nebula, I would recommend you set it at 100. Uh, what that does is that it allows, again, enough light to hit the sensor. And we're really going to demonstrate that here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bump this up to 110. And we're going to leave the exposure time at 15 seconds. And we're going to do a little bit of a comparison of uh, what you guys can see in regards to the nebula. Actually, you can actually see some of the nebula here already, right here in the center, without even doing any long exposures, just because we have more gain up. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 10, just like we did with our emulator image. And we're going to go ahead and let this shoot. Okay, stacking is now complete. So let's go ahead and look at the difference here. Let's go to our images. Let's save this. Hit download. 
And let's look at the difference between these two images. Now remember, the first one we only had at a gain of 80. Again, it was, I believe it was at 15 seconds exposure, but we had it only at gain 80. Now let's go ahead and look at the difference here between gain 80 and gain 110. All right, here is gain 110. Yeah, there's a lot more noise in the image. I'm not sure if you can notice. But one more thing that you can see is that there's a whole lot more nebulosity visible in this image. And you can even begin to see the pillars of creation, those that dark thing right there in the middle of the nebula. Now, uh, there, there is a big difference. It's not really much you can see in regards to, you know, just a few seconds, just a couple minutes of exposure. It was just 10 exposures on both of these, which honestly, again, really impresses me about this telescope that just such a little amount of time can already bring out nebulosity. I found that very impressive. But as you can see, there is a big difference between 80 gain and 110 gain. Now, again, one more thing that you do need to keep in mind in regards to this is that do not overexpose your nebula. Do not underexpose your nebula. Do not give it too little time. Do not give it too much time. Uh, honestly, in regards to astrophotography, there's not too much time, so I'm not really sure why I said that, but do not give it too little time if you want to have it at gain 110 keep it at 15 seconds do not lower it from 15 seconds if you lower it from 15 seconds it is going to be way too noisy and the image is going to come out looking not the best unless you get a good amount of exposures like 999 exposures that's that's fine but if you try to do anything less than that it's it's going to be a very messy messy looking image so okay one more thing we have to look at if you have a lot of light pollution, perhaps you live where I live, Bordeaux class 5.5. It's, it's horrible here. The night sky, you can barely see any stars where I am. Or maybe you have nice, pristine, dark, black skies. I am 100% jealous of you. I would love to have what you have, to not have to use any filters like this. But unfortunately, I live in the city. I live in the suburbs, so kind of have to use it sometimes. What this does is this is going to block out a lot of light pollution caused by security cameras, LED lights, uh, a lot of uh, moon moonlight that can also block out a lot of that. So we're going to go ahead and do this one more time. We're going to leave it at 15 seconds, gain 110. And we're going to switch this to IR pass now. And we're going to set it to that. As you can see, it already actually made a difference in our image. And we're going to again do 10 seconds. And we're going to go ahead and compare these one more time. Uh, before we do a little bit of explaining regarding some other stuff. So go ahead and press shoot. Okay, shooting is once again complete. So let's go back one more time to our album and check this out. Go ahead and download your image as we always do. And we're going to now look at the difference between these three images here. The first one, as you can see, there's not a lot of noise it's very nice you know it's nice not having super crazy amount of noise but that is the reduced amount of gain as you can see you cannot see a lot of the nebulosity here uh, of course there's less noise less nebulosity uh, again and this was only a few amount of exposures only 10 of them uh, were included here uh, it's nice that you can see some of the nebulosity the stars don't really have halos we're kind of just checking out the difference here between each of them. The background is pretty light. It doesn't have a lot of, it's not a very dark background, only here in the corners. Now let's go ahead and check out the other one. The second one we did. The background is a bit smoother. There's a little bit more noise here, as you can see. However, you can see a lot more of the nebulosity due to the higher amount of gain. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, as you can see. The background is a little bit smoother. There's not as much noise. Uh, again, it's pretty much the same as the second one. Uh, the corners do have, they are very, very, very dark, which is nice. You can actually see a little bit of the clouding from the actual Milky Way as the Eagle Nebula is in the Milky Way. You couldn't really notice that as much in this one here. That is due to the light pollution filter that is automatically installed inside of the Dwarf 2. Now we're going to we're going to talk a little bit now about filters. Now the uh infrared UV filter that is included in the Dwarf 2 is great if you want to use it on certain nebula. There's some nebula that are infrared light based. 
you really need to do your research on each nebula that you are checking out uh, because if you cut that out, you might be cutting out a lot of the details that would be included in nebula. However, with things like galaxies, you don't have to worry about that as much. The, the galaxies are typically brighter, uh, and more core-related, um, and you can use that kind of filter with that. However, if you're going to use any kind of filter, whether it's internal or external, make sure that you focus after you use the filter because filters can alter the, how well your telescope is focused. Uh, there's a filter made by Dwarf Lab, the Dwarf Lab UHC filter. That cuts out a lot of um, infrared light. It cuts out UV light. Uh, it cuts out a lot of different ones and kind of leaves two different channels. It's kind of like a ZWO dual band, but it's just not, it doesn't have as narrow a band, so it doesn't really bring out the detail as strongly, but it is still a very, very good uh, filter. I highly recommend that you guys buy it. I'm pretty sure it's only... Uh, $25, I'm pretty sure, on the Dwarf Lab website. So make sure that you go and check that one out, uh, along with the little filter holder that they have. Uh, if you're going to use a ZWO Duo Band, uh, some things we have to talk about here. For the ZO, ZWO Duo Band, you have to make sure that you have your settings all the way up to 15 seconds. Gain, you could pretty much leave that the same. Make sure that you have your IR on pass because it's already cutting out pretty much all of the IR light that you have. Uh, so there's really no need to have that on cut. Having it on cut would just be reducing even more light, which you don't really want in astrophotography. You want as much light as possible to go in. Uh, there's several kinds of data. You know, there's the photons emitted by sulfur, it's photons emitted by hydrogen, uh, oxygen that's all going into your sensor that you will be processing later on. The, what the um, UHC filter does and the ZWO Dew band filter does is that it really focuses on the hydrogen and the oxygen data, which is what's most prevalent or it, it's mostly what, what it composes of most nebula, unless it is a reflection nebula. Reflection nebulas you need to be careful of. They do not emit actual hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur data, no. That is... It's best if you just use something like a UHC filter. Uh, you don't want to be cutting out uh, other light because it is not actually emitting the light. It's just reflected off of a star that is nearby. So make sure that you don't really use any filters on that except for like a, your normal light pollution filter instead of you know a specific dual band. Uh, things like galaxies, you don't really want to use a dual band unless you're really trying to bring out the uh, H-alpha data within it that can that can make a big difference in regards to bringing out the red on the inside uh and with galaxies yeah again it's fine to use the dwarf lab uhc filter i actually used it before on the andromeda galaxy uh regarding the rest of these settings there's really not that much else to go over it what these do is for more of the preview uh you know you go to the album is more of what affects all of this uh this is more of a pro level tutorial so what this is for is for if you're going to take your telescope and use the data for post-processing on programs like Serial, uh, PixInsight, GIMP, that's what more of this is for. Uh, so we're not really going to be going over uh, these specific settings because, again, it's not really, it doesn't affect that as much. It's more just affecting, uh, again, exposure time, gain, and IR pass. That is the main three big things that are going to have an effect on your astrophotography. So make sure... Uh, that you pay attention to the details that were stated in this video uh, in regards to the filters. Again, if you're going to use a filter, put it on, then do your focusing. That's that's very important. Put it on, then do your focusing. Otherwise, your stars will not be nice and crisp and clean. Polar align your telescope if you do not want a lot of uh, field rotation. Field rotation can take away a lot of the, the size of your image. You want a big image. That's, that's what's nice. You want to see all the stars surrounding it. You when you want to have the centerpiece, you don't want to have to cut out a whole lot of your image just because, um, it, just because of field rotation. So, uh, make sure that you polar align your telescope. Find a good tripod that has a rotating head that you can polar align it with. Uh, that will take away a lot of your field rotation issues, and it will allow you to have a much bigger workable image. Uh, before you do it, always take your astro darks. Make sure you leave your telescope outside. 
I'd say about an hour before you actually go to do your astro session and take your astro darks. What that does is it allows the sensor to pretty much get accustomed to the to the outside temperature where you're going to be shooting. Uh, that will reduce the hot pixels and make your image quality come out much better. So hopefully these tips kind of help you guys out a little bit in regards to the astrophotography with the Dwarf 2. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments. As always, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, that would help out the channel a lot. Um, and if you really, if you need me to reach out, uh, I can always just reach out to you guys. My email is in the description uh, of my channel itself. Um, you can email me and I can answer some questions for you. Or you can just reach out to me on Facebook and Messenger. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching everyone. Please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for future content.